This is lesson 2.5, solving compound inequalities on page 82 of the textbook. In this lesson, you will learn how to write and graph compound inequalities. You will learn how to solve a compound inequality. And you will also learn how to use a compound inequality to solve a real life problem. Now let's talk about, first of all, writing and graphing compound inequalities. A compound inequality is an inequality formed by joining two inequalities with the word and or the word or. Let's start there. I would definitely get that in your notes. A compound inequality is an inequality formed by joining two inequalities with the word and or or. Let's think carefully about the word and versus or for a minute. They seem pretty simple in English, but they're, they have a specific meaning. And to help with that specific meaning, listen to this analogy. Suppose you wanted to go to the football game this Friday, and you asked your mom, hey, mom, I want to go to the game. And your mom said to you, you can go to the game if you do the dishes tonight and you clean your room. Now the word and means something specific. Think about that. What does that mean? I hope you're thinking, shoot, that means mom just told me I have to do both. I have to do the dishes and I got to clean my room. I got to do both. I got two jobs that I have to fulfill. However, what if mom said to you, I tell you what, you can go to the game if you do the dishes or you clean your room. Does that have a different meaning? I hope you're thinking, yeah, sure it does. That means I only have to do one of them. I only have to meet one condition. That's exactly what it means mathematically. The word and mathematically means both conditions must be met. They use the word intersection. It means both conditions must be met for that inequality to be true. But the word or means either condition could be met. You only have to meet one of the two. Here would be a sample of an inequality that's compound that's joined by the word and. I want x greater than equal to and I want x less than 5. Now let's look at these pictures. Here's x greater than equal to. It's any value to the right of 2 or equaling 2. Here's x less than 5. What are the numbers that would meet both conditions? Like for example, wouldn't 3 be greater than 2 but less than 5 at the same time? Or what about 4? Or what about 2? Would 2 be greater than or equal to 2 and less than 5 at the same time? Can you see in this picture, and I'll try to highlight it here in purple, that any number from 2 up to 5 would meet both conditions? Now, there's no such term as this, but for some reason my whole life I've always thought of these this way, so I'm going to say it. I've always called this a triple inequality, and there's no such word as that, but it's always helped me remember it. Here's why I call it triple inequality. Let me write it out. 2 less than equal x less than 5. Let me highlight this. Can you see how there's three parts? There's 2, there's x, and there's 5. There's three parts. Now, if you go home and tell your parents tonight, hey, I... I learned what a triple inequality is. They're going to be like, what the heck are you talking about? There's no such thing. So there's no official term like that, but that's how I've always helped myself remember it. And any compound inequality that has and, I can write it in that triple form. Okay? Let's talk about the or inequalities. They're a little different. Like, why, let's look at this one. Y less than equal negative 2 or Y greater than 1. Here would be a picture of y less than equal negative 2. It's all the values at negative 2 or left. And here would be a picture of y greater than 1. If I want the graph of y less than equal negative 2 or y greater than 1, 
I just take both of these graphs and draw them on the same number line. So let's think. Would the number 100 way in the heck to the right, would that be a solution? And yeah, it is. It's on this line because here's why. Does 100 meet one of these conditions? Remember, or does it mean both? It means just meet one. Yeah, 100 does. 100 is greater than 1. What about 0? Would 0 be a solution? Well, it's not drawn here. Let's check. Is 0 less than or equal to negative 2? Mm, no. Is it bigger than 1? Mm, no. It's not meeting either condition. So the numbers that we shaded are meeting both conditions. So that's why uh, compound inequalities, when we say and, it means both conditions or means 1. Okay, so let's look at a couple quick samples here. Let's write this inequality and, and then graph it. A number x is greater than negative 8, here's the key word, and, that means I can write this as a triple inequality, and less than or equal to 4. So x greater than negative 8 and x less than or equal 4. So negative 8 is on the small end, x is in the middle, and 4 is on the big end. So you see how they wrote that in a triple inequality format. Negative 8 less than x less than equal 4. Now when I graph it, it's all the values in between negative 8 and 4. Now do you see why they're shading 4? They're shading 4 because it has an equals with it. And you see why negative 8 is an open circle because there was not an equal with that. Okay, let's look at uh, part B. A number y is at most 0 or, so this is, n I can't write ors as triple inequalities. y is at most 0 or at least 2. So y is at most 0. That means the biggest y can be is 0 or it's less than that. Or y is at least 2. That means it's 2 or bigger. So I cannot write ors as triple inequalities, so I'm just going to write it out, y less than equals 0 or y greater than equal 2, and then here's the graph of that. Here's my graph of y is less than equals 0. I, you can see that highlighted here in yellow, this portion. And then in orange, here's the portion of y greater than equal 2. You notice, closed circles before, for both it said equal. Um, just Go ahead real quick and try these two, and I'll be back to walk you through them here in just a second. So pause the video and try that. Okay, I'm back. So here's the first one. A number D is no more than 0 and less than 10. And let me read that one more time. A number D is more than, I meant, I said, I think I said is no more than, is more than 0 and less than 10. So is more than 0. So here's D more than 0, and I want D less than 10. Now you notice the word and means I can write this as a triple inequality, so 0 is the small amount, D is in the middle, and 10 is the large amount. There's my triple inequality. D is in between 0 and 10. I'll graph that in a minute. For 2, a number A is fewer than negative 6, here's A less than negative 6, or, now remember, or we cannot write in triple inequality form, we'll have to write these out separate, no less than negative 3. So A cannot be less than negative 3, that means it's bigger than negative 3. Let me quickly go ahead and graph those two. Okay, I'm back. So here is um, D in between 0 and 10, open circle 0, open circle 10, and shading in between. And then for this one, A is fewer than negative 6, so it's got to be less than negative 6, or no less than negative 3, so it could be greater than or equal. If it's negative 3, that's not less than. So it could be either one. So we have an open circle at negative 6 and a closed circle at negative 3, and there's a picture of that. Open circle at negative 6, shading left, close circle at negative 3, and shading right. Let's talk about solving compound inequalities. You can solve a compound inequality by solving two inequalities separately. In other words, we could be solving two separate inequalities, so two different uh, groups of work, basically. When a compound inequality with and is written as a single inequality, that's what I call triple inequality, 
you can solve the inequality by performing the same operations on each expression. So let me show you that in a minute. Let's solve this one here first. Okay? You could solve this. You could do what they're going to show you here. You could write these out separately. Negative 4 is less than x minus 2 and x minus 2 is less than 3 and then solve each separately. You can see they're doing that. Add 2, add 2, and there's your answer. X would be in between negative 2 and 5. Now, I think that's a little bit more work than you need to do. You could solve it all at one time by doing the following. I think most of you like less work. I do too. Let me highlight this real quick. I, remember, I call this triple inequality because here's one part, here's one part, and here's one part. Now, I want to solve this. I have to get x by itself. Can you see how I have to get rid of minus 2? If I just add 2 to all three parts, look at what happens. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. These cancel. I have x in the middle. And 3 plus 2 is 5. Do you notice how I get the same answer without having to do both sets of work? So if you like less work, if you have a triple inequality, as long as you do the same thing to all three parts, you can get the correct response and then graph it. Look at part B. Now in B, they do exactly what I was talking about. They go ahead and they break this into three parts. Now let's do our onion here. So first of all, X is the center. I got to get rid of the negative 2 and I got to get rid of the plus 1. Do you understand why we're getting rid of plus 1 first? It's the outside layer. Take 1 away from all three parts. If you do that, negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. The plus 1, negative 1 cancel. I have negative 2x in the middle and 9 minus 1 is 8. Here's the next step. Divide each side, or every part, I should say, by negative 2. Now remember, this is super important. Since we're dividing by a negative, we can't forget to reverse that inequality symbol. Do you notice how the inequality symbol in each case is being switched around? So let's do that. Uh, negative 4 divided by negative 2 is positive 2. We reverse the inequality symbol. These cancel and reverse the inequality symbol. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative 4, and that's what I have to graph. So I have an open circle at 2 and a closed circle at negative 4, and I'm shading in between. Let's talk about solving an or compound inequality. Now these, I don't, we don't have a choice. We're just going to have to write them out separate as they are and solve each. They're easy to solve. You can see this here, onion. We have to add 5 first, divide by 3. Y would be less than negative 1, and you can see they graph that here. Or here, add 1, divide by 2. Y is greater than 3, and you can see they shaded that here. And there's the graph for or. Okay? Why don't you pause the video now, and I would like you to try those four questions. Okay, and I'm back. We'll graph these in a minute, but here's three. It's a triple inequality. So you notice to get M simplify or to solve for M, I got to get rid of plus four. As long as I subtract four from all three parts, I will have an equivalent inequality. Or here, I got to get K by itself. As long as I add five to the left, the center, and the right, and now divide left, center, and right by 2, there you go. Now, for number 5, it's an or problem. I have no choice. I have to just keep these separate, and i got to do the work. i got to solve each one. Take away the 3 and divide by the 4. And then over here, add the 8. And now for 6, same thing. 6 is an or question. I have no choice. I just have to solve separately. Subtract 1 and divide by 2. Here, subtract, I have plus 3, subtract 3, 
divide by negative 2. Now you notice I'm highlighting that because when you divide each side by a negative, that inequality has to be flipped. I'd get P greater than equal 2. And now to graph them. For number 3, I'm shading in between 1 and 6. Do you notice the closed circle at 1? There it is right there. For the next question, 1 and 6 with open circle shading in between. So there's 1 and 6 with open circle shading in between. Here, C is less than equal negative 2 and also greater than 7. So there's less than equal negative 2, greater than 7. And the last one, P less than negative 4 or P greater than equal 2. There, oops, there is P less than negative 4 and greater than equal negative 2. Okay, or I'm sorry, greater than equal 2, I meant to say. Okay, and then to wrap things up, let's talk about solving a real life question. Modeling with mathematics. It says, electrical devices should operate efficient, efficiently within a speci specified temperature range. Outside the operating temperature range, the device may fail. Write and solve a compound inequality that represents the possible operating temperatures in Fahrenheit of the smartphone. Now let's look at the smartphone. They tell us that the smartphone operates from 0 to 35 Celsius. Well, that's easy. It operates in this range. But here's the problem. I want Fahrenheit. So if you remember earlier, it was in Chapter 2, we had some equations. We don't want Celsius, we want Fahrenheit. So there was a formula for that. Celsius is the same as 5 ninths Fahrenheit minus 32. So let's replace Celsius with that. Now I have a little disagreement with the book. They have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 steps, which I think is ridiculous. They're not following their own directions half the time. They're making this 10 times more complicated. Let's solve this. We shouldn't, we don't need 9 steps. We should be able to do this in 2. Okay, let me get my onion out. Ready? Fahrenheit's the center. Let me actually do it in a different color. Fahrenheit's the center. Minus 32 is the next layer times 5 ninths is the outside layer. I got to get rid of times 5 ninths. How do I do that? I hope you're thinking divide. Okay, well let's divide all three parts by 5 ninths. Okay, so 0 divided by 5 ninths is 0. In the middle, these cancel. I have F minus 32. And if I take my calculator, and you might want to do this, 35 divided by 5 ninths, just to check, you ought to be getting 63. Well, now do you see there's only one more step? How do I get rid of minus 32? Just add 32 to all three parts. And if you do that, you'll have 32 less than equal F less than equal 95. So the Fahrenheit temperature, the smartphone, will work anywhere from 32 to 95 degrees. Okay? So again, sometimes I don't understand why would they make this so many steps when we only need two steps to solve it. Okay, so I think that is what I need to cover in the video. If you have questions, make sure you ask in class.